This is the second tutorial out of three. On the first tutorial, we learned how to identify a knowledge asset and how to share it in MindMeister. Today we will look into what a knowledge domain is and how to design a navigation experience. A knowledge domain is basically a group of knowledge assets that share a particular characteristic. One domain equals one mind map. To illustrate this, we can use an example company, Bold Studio Architects. In the first tutorial, we looked at how the sales department could capture and share knowledge assets in one mind map. In this example, sales is the name of the knowledge domain. The domain is populated with a number of knowledge assets. Now let's look at how the assets have been placed and why. One important asset we can immediately find is company presentation for clients, which we hope will be used frequently. Another important asset is the key project summaries. We can also see that there is an asset called commercial proposals, which certainly belongs to the sales domain and is likely to be used a lot. We recommend that you place assets in the proximity of other assets that are likely to be used together. In this example, the presentation, the key projects, and the CVs of key people are likely to be used together. Now let's go ahead and move to another side of the map. Here we can find other marketing material. When we open this topic, we find a long list of assets. This is not the best way of building a good navigation experience, as lists of more than six or seven items can feel crowded and unnatural. One of the key characteristics that make knowledge maps such good environments is that it's extremely easy for us to group items and make the navigation much more friendly. In this case, we can see that there are two types of assets, brochures by building type and brochures by language. So let's go ahead and group them. First, we create a new child called brochures by building type, and then another called brochures by language. Once we have them, we only need to drag and drop. Now the navigation is much more natural and feels closer to how our brain actually works. When it comes to building the knowledge map, we should not think of it as a static environment. As time goes by and we go ahead with our work and our projects, we capture the knowledge assets as they become available. For this reason, knowledge maps start simple, but they grow in complexity as they develop, kind of like an ice formation. Let's look at an example to explain this. Let's assume that a couple of months went by and the sales team at Bold Studio have been working hard to gain new work. Let's take a look again at their map, in particular the area on other marketing material. We see that our colleagues have added some new assets, such as the company CSR report, articles in the press, client testimonials, and pro bono activities. These are all useful assets when it comes to marketing. We observe that there are now seven items, and that this part of the map starts to look cluttered. As we saw in the previous example, it's very easy for us to simplify things. Let's go ahead and create a new topic called brochures. We can drag here all the assets containing brochures. Now it looks again very natural to navigate, but we could still do better. As it is now, the brochures topic is placed within other marketing material, but we could consider the option of promoting the brochures outside the other marketing material. Let's see how it looks if we do this. Let's drag brochures next to the domain name, just outside the other marketing material. I think it looks better and it makes more sense this way as it's not very likely that we will be using the company CSR report as often as we use brochures. We've seen how to organize assets within one domain. The next step is to allow navigation between domains. In our example, we know that there are some people in our organization who are in charge of sales. But the company has been growing and now we have two people dedicated to marketing, producing content, communicating on social media, and so on. Since they are very productive and have a lot of work to do, they decide that it's better and easier if they have their own domain called marketing. Let's look at our example to see how we can create new domains and links between them. To create the marketing domain, we only need to create a new mind map like this and give it the domain name in the center of the map. We can also go to the sales domain and copy and paste all the assets that are relevant for marketing into our new map. The map is now ready for the marketing team to start work. Now, what happens to the sales domain? Since brochures and all the rest are now part of the marketing domain, we no longer need them in the sales domain. We can go ahead and delete them. However, since marketing is clearly associated to sales, it makes sense to create a link between those two domains. Therefore, we can create a new topic called marketing and copy and paste the URL of the marketing domain. We can repeat the same operation in the marketing domain by adding a topic to sales and pasting the URL to the sales domain. In the first tutorial, we learned how to identify and share knowledge assets. Today, we've seen what a knowledge domain is and how to make them easy to navigate and how to create connections between different domains. These are the foundations to build powerful and intuitive knowledge maps. 
In the next and last tutorial, we'll provide some tips to get started with collaborative knowledge mapping with your team.